I try to sum up. I try to sum up uh, today's interventions, but also uh, the long journey called the Conference on the Future of Europe. Dear, dear citizens, uh, we are here, Hineke. So that's that's important. Dear citizens, dear liberal friends, it has been a very inspiring day for all of us. It has been inspiring to listen to so many of you, uh, your debates, your ideas, proposals, uh, and of course. Uh, the, the question is how we're going to go uh, together. I can speak for, for many when I saw uh, that since our first town hall uh, in Sarajevo, we have managed to have conversations that have, have had uh, a tremendous impact uh, in, uh, in our way of life. I can only uh, say I'm very proud of the impact of our party in this process, and uh, I'm sure that uh, we'll continue bringing uh, a good and, uh, and positive ideas to the European project. We had an impact by opening our digital hub for the citizens to share their ideas uh, and solutions, of course, from the very beginning. We wanted this conference to be a successful story for the Liberals, but also for the European Union as such. A conference with a set agenda, a conference with goals. That was the, the main idea. I believe we have shown this not a uh, PR exercise, but a true citizens' assembly where the citizens uh, were certainly involved. And again, uh, but we must ask ourselves what is, what is next. Uh, we have to implement what citizens have uh, proposed to us. There must be no excuses. Otherwise, we are simply leaving it to those on the extreme right and left to do it for us. We don't want that. Uh, I do not need to remind anyone about the fact that our partners uh, in France and, and Slovenia are fighting exactly those extremist uh, forces uh, this week. They are fighting these extremist forces with these proposals, with these ideas, our ideas, liberal ideas, democratic ideas, through a ballot box. And they cannot count, and they can count on our support uh, during, the, during the legitimate uh, process of democracy. But we know democracy is more than just voting uh, uh, in a few seconds. This is why the conference on the future of Europe should be a model, perhaps not at uh, the same scale, but a continuous exercise uh, involving citizens and bringing them together with the European institutions. Uh, what happens at the European level has a direct impact on regional, but also on, on local level. Dear colleagues, uh, the last week have shown us that our freedoms, our prosperity, and European way of life was uh, put under, under big pressure. Our liberal, rule-based order is what guaranteed the longest period of peace in our continent. If we want to go back to being in a continent at peace, we must rebuild new order that guarantees collective security and prosperity. Today, we close our action plan on the future of Europe with this final event, but we will not stop and we will continue fighting for our liberal values. And I would like to uh, once again thank you for your strong commitment. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for being with Alde. And I want to quote one, once more uh, Hans van Balen, who was always saying liberals must unite. But this time, liberals must act. The future is now. Thank you so much.
very great to see, uh, and of course we are here on a Saturday afternoon in, uh, in The Hague, in the Netherlands, and if you look uh, to those pictures in the different capitals, where you organize uh, those meetings, like the meeting we, what we had today, then we can only be proud of us uh, and of our liberal uh, family. Um, I think uh, we had an in-depth discussion today, so I would like also to thank all the participants here also, uh, because you were very active and uh, unfortunately we had also not enough time uh, to, uh, to take all the questions, uh, but I think um, I'm often in seminars or congresses like this, but this was for me personally, really, the first time that I followed from the start until the end, because I think the questions uh, what we discussed, also especially uh, this afternoon, is the key question now these days in politics. Not only in European politics, but also in the international uh, side, but also national side, and also, for example, in municipalities uh, where you are, are a representative of in Dordrecht. Um, this that means also we need to have and distribute an answer. And we tried already today, uh, I have some ingredients in my head, we need to be more bold, uh, curious, we need to also to talk with more emotion, um, we need to reform, uh, reform the European Union, for example, engage with citizens, not only when there is a voting uh, or an elections days and that you uh, will vote, uh, ask for, to vote for you in the three or four weeks uh, before. Um, uh, but uh, still, uh, we need to challenge it because I started already this morning. We have a, this moment a war on our, our European continent and that's a war against liberal democracy. Ukraine, the people of Ukraine are now in war defending our liberal democracy. We don't need to forget, because that means also maximum support to them. Because what I also mentioned, we need to defend liberal de democracy anywhere if you want also to protect liberal de de democracy elsewhere. And that means also that I think we need to raise these questions and the analysis what we also had this afternoon, it is not so simple. It's not about raising substance about topics, for example, or talking about qualified majority in foreign politics or foreign policy. Uh, well, there is need, that's not how we engage, I think, with our own citizens. Our citizens wants to give trust to you as a politician. Uh, and what citizen doesn't like is that it will be mistrust, that you don't promise, uh, that you don't deliver what you promised. Uh, and if you cannot deliver what you promised, then you need also to explain to your citizens why you don't, de de don't de deliver. And sometimes I think we are not doing this. Uh, and that means that we also need to have an other, uh, well, strategy how we reach out uh, to our citizens that's not in discussions as today or in European Parliament when you address, for example, a statement or that you are in debate. That is on another thing. What uh, Adrian also mentioned, you need uh, to have strategy on asymmetric uh, strategy uh, if you want uh, to count it. And also, especially I want to underline what he also mentioned, we need also to be scare, uh, careful if you want to have an election pro-European against, against European, because otherwise you will also see a movement like this. Well, um, I think we have some housework, some homework also to do. Uh, we're touching on a lot of elements and a lot of ingredients, um, but for certain we need also to be prepared for 2024. European elections, for example, and of course also in the national elections. We see what we need to do, I think. And we have also give some answers, uh, but the completely answer we don't have yet. Uh, just please think with us, think with all the family, think also with Renew Europe, 
Uh, we will also already prepare uh, the strategy also towards 2024 campaign. This will be the input, also all the input what our citizens did uh, also in the other action plan uh, if you talk about the Conference of Future of Europe. But I think we have a task together with each other to address how our strategy needs to be. It's not about the old way, how we did it always. Yeah, make a manifesto, talk about substance, addressing things. No, it's about, I think, closer engagement, what Dambana also mentioned, but also on an other, uh, on an other way. They need to trust you. They need to understand that you recognize their concerns. Uh, and then you need to also, indeed, explain. Um, and also the element, what is also mentioned this afternoon, about education, education in democracy, education, what's, what's, what's in the importance to have elections and to have vote? Well, we forgot that, I think. And that means we need to build up. Just thank you uh, for to be here today. Um, we have also an honorable guest, but before I give the floor also to Liesje Schijnemacher, who is now our Minister of uh, Foreign Trade and Development, uh, and she's just coming from United States, Washington, or not? Yeah. Well, if you want to make uh, also some closing remarks and to go then also to our uh, cocktail reception, uh, but before I give you the floor, I would like to give the floor also to you because you have an announcement, especially, of course, uh, about Hans van Baalen, because Hans van Baalen is still amongst us, and we wanted also to keep that for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Unfortunately, indeed, the flights are normalizing, so... Minister Schreinemacher made it uh, to uh, this event as well. We are very excited about it. We are also aware of the fact that some flights are still being cancelled. Uh, Roman, actually his flight to Zagreb was just cancelled. I uh, made a joke, we had a little intervention to make because we, we need you on stage one more time actually. Um, so we are very happy to still have you here. But if there is someone that needs some practical uh, help with uh, flights or hotels or whatsoever, please let us know. Uh, we are happy to help you. The staff from the VVD, the staff from the ALDE is, is happy to help you. I feel a little bit humble, actually, to make this uh, announcement uh, here um, about how we're going to um, uh, make sure that the legacy of Hans van Baalen will not be forgotten. That's a very important task, I think, and it's also a big task. And it's also an honor, actually, to make that announcement here. Unfortunately, I don't have to do that alone. I can do that with our international friends, so I'll ask a few people to come to join me here on stage, actually, which is, of course, the president of Liberal International, Hakim al Haite. Big applause. Have a seat, please. Thank you. And also, of course, the president. You have seen him uh, many times already today. The president of the ALDE, Johan. <laughs> and, of course, uh, he just missed his flight uh, due to the disruption. But we are very happy to have here, of course, uh, Roman, the president of Lipsin. Thank you very much. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Um, before we're going to the toast, we're going to um, remember Hans van Baalen for one more time today. He was mentioned many times, and that is, I think, uh, the right thing to do, because his legacy is big. His uh, name was dedicated to this town hall meeting. As I said in the beginning, it is a big honor that we have this last town hall meeting here in The Hague uh, that was named to him uh, in his hometown. Um, and without a doubt, I think Hans van Baalen was one of the most inspiring and energetic politicians of his generation. Um, of the VVD, we are very proud of that, but sometimes he was even more famous abroad than he was in the Netherlands. So therefore, I'm very glad that we can make this announcement, not just as VVD, but together with our international friends from Aldo Lipsin and Liberal International, of course. He had several formal roles in politics, Hans. Um, he was the predecessor of Ilhan and Timmy as president of the Aldo. He was the predecessor of Malik as president of, um, or as leader at the VVD in the European Parliament. He was the predecessor of Hakima as president of Liberal International. And very humble, but he was also my predecessor as VVD International Secretary. But those were just the formal rules that Hans had. And Hans was much more than the, the formal roles that he had. He was a visionary, a strong defender of liberal values, 
and above all, an inspirator to, I think, an entire international group of liberals uh, and politicians. And I would like to give a personal example of that. And it actually, it was already mentioned a little bit by Ilhan during the panel, uh, the moment I'd like to remember. Um, as far as I can remember, it was also the night that we uh, won the Eurovision Song Contest for the first time in 40 years, but that was not the point here. The point was that we were in Bosnia to visit the Nasastranga Party Congress, uh, which was, of course, and you've seen that here today, Nasastranga is very much the, the liberal bright star of, of, of Bosnia and very much the hope of Bosnia. And he... We were there as VVD and Lipsyn Partners, uh, and Hans, of course, as president of the ALDA. And that was important. Uh, it was important for him, but it was also very important for Nasa Stranka and the Party Congress. And he gave a speech of basically three sentences. They were a little bit mentioned already by Johan. Three sentences that gave so much direction, actually, to actually summarize the entire day in our discussion here. He said, yesterday, there was war. Today, there's peace. And thanks to Nasastranka, Bosnia now has a tomorrow. That was basically what he said. But the atmosphere in the, um, in the room was uh, electric. Everybody was applauding. Everybody was excited about the fact that the president of Aldo was here, believed in the importance of the Balkan region, believed in the importance of Nasastranka, and he really gave the energy to uh, new political groups everywhere throughout Europe and outside Europe, very important, also outside Europe. Um, to make sure that, um, that liberalism should be on the rise. Actually, he was there on the, um, at the Nasastranka Congress on his way to the inauguration of that other important liberal, a liberal that at that time was not yet a member of the Alta family, and he believed that this person should one day become a member of the Alta family, and he couldn't be more right, because he was on his way to the inauguration, inauguration of President Zelensky. Um, and later on, of course, that became indeed a candidate um, um, a member party of the Alden. So also here, his visionary uh, view was right. He was a Western European that always took geopolitical concerns of Eastern European countries very seriously. He shared their suspicion what Putin did. He was right there. And um, the future move, he always supported NATO integration, European integration for realistic geopolitical purposes. And that's why he's still being loved by so many people in this room and also many people outside this room that will join us in Dublin and in Sofia when we start to um, um, make sure that we uh, celebrate his legacy. Because on behalf of the VVD, I would like to announce that we want to uh, keep his legacy alive. I'm thrilled to do, do this together with all the Lipsyn and Limbrill International. Um, as Hans would express it, indeed, we as liberals, we have to unite. And we do that in the way we remember Hans as well. During the Alder Congress in Dublin, we, many of us will be there, of course, uh, many of us that are not in the room as well, we will award the first Hans van Balen medal, and that's going to be a new tradition. And that is an important announcement to make today. But also, it's very important everyone goes to Sofia for two reasons. The first reason is that there will be a Lipsyn Prize named of Hans van Balen for specific efforts in the Balkan region, his beloved Balkan region, that he visited as a person to go on holidays with his family, uh, but also, as, as I said, as the president of the ALDO or in the different political roles in order to support uh, liberalism on the Balkan region. And therefore, the legacy will be kept alive, especially in the Balkans as well, with a specific award in that region. And of course, Liberal International will rename the Freedom Prize in the name of Hans van Baalen as well. And therefore, it's very important that we all are in um, uh, Sofia to meet each other, to see the vibrant uh, liberal voices of um, uh, the Balkan region, but also because it's very important that we do not just focus on the things that go on in Europe, but as Hakima said, um, uh, liberalism is a global force and we should make sure that liberalism li um, wins everywhere. Uh, he was also very much engaged in the fact that Africa would be involved in uh, liberal international and also that part of the legacy is something that we would like to keep alive. The selection committee will be uh, consistent of our organizations, the United Organizations, uh, but even more important, his wife, Ineke, will join the selection committee as well. And uh, from this podium, I would like to uh, express my um, admiration, actually, for the way you um, keep Hans' legacy alive. You are here still uh, on your own name, but also in his name, in order to make sure that it is not forgotten. You will join us, I think, in uh, Dublin. You will join us in, in Sofia. Uh, so there will be many moments to share our beautiful memories of Hans uh, together with you. And we are very excited about that. So maybe... I can just ask you to um, join us in a big applause for the legacy of Hans van Baal, and we will remember it in Lipsyn and Sofia. Thank you.
mag, hoeft niet. Ja? Kom maar op die deze trappen. Thank you very much. It's very much an honor for me to see um, that so many people are still having memories of my husband. He lived liberalism, not just as a politi political um, movement, but just as a human being, being a liberal, allowing everybody to have his own opinion, uh, upholding the freedom of everybody else and upholding the distance you need towards one another to keep each other's personality alive. So I'm very, very happy that all of you unite, all of your organizations unite to, um, to honor Hans. I think that if God exists, and if there is a cloud that he is on, he would be very, very proud today. And he would laughing out loud and hoping that we have a, a lot of beer afterwards. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.